Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. The struggle ahead. A deal to secure school funding is in place, but will virtual education really be enough for our kids? We're going to begin, though, with a tragedy downriver. A boat capsizes in the middle of the Detroit River, and now the search is on for two missing boaters. Glad you're with us today at 5. Dive teams have been using sonar all day to try to find them. And here's what we know right now. 14 people were on board the boat when witnesses say it capsized near Gros Eel. 12 were rescued, and now the search continues for the two men who went in the water and didn't come back up. Our Victor Williams is on Gros Eel tonight with more. Yeah, well, as you can see behind me, the Coast Guard is still searching for those two men who went missing here in the Detroit River after their boat capsized. At this point, they've been searching now for 24 hours with no end in sight. Since Sunday night around 730, multiple agencies have been looking for two men following a boating accident in the Gross Ill area. We're told 14 people were originally on board the 39 foot boat when for some unknown reason it turned over. 12 were saved by a boater who saw everything happening. Unfortunately, two people went underwater and never made it back up. Those two men included 52 year old Robert Childs, who lives right off the water. Police even used his boathouse as a makeshift headquarters as the search continued for multiple hours. The other person missing is 66 year old Stephen Rooney, who's actually a priest of a church in Trenton. Gross ill police and members of the Coast Guard won't stop until the missing men have been found. And we want to clarify, we are about a little over two hours away from that 24 hour point, but the boat has been retrieved and we're told that right now it's in storage. It's uh, believed that they're going to take a look at it and maybe try to find out what happened out there on the water. Reporting live in Gross Hill, Victor Williams, Local 4, back to you. Victor, any word on the conditions of the other passengers who were rescued? Well, we're hearing that they're pretty shaken up right now. We understand that there were some kids that were actually on the boat and had to undergo mm -hmm. all that. So you can only imagine what they're going through at this point. Yeah, indeed. Okay, Victor, thanks. Elsewhere, a man is in custody and is going to face charges in the murders of four people. Raymond Bailey turned himself into the sheriff's department in Bay County late yesterday. He has been returned to Wayne County now to face charges. These murders took place Saturday in Sumter Township. Brothers Neil and Forrest Sampson, along with their two cousins, Laura and Sarah Tanner, were all shot to death. Sources say Raymond Bailey was the former boyfriend of one of the female victims. So stay tuned to Local 4. Coming up at 6, Victor Williams will take a closer look at why this crime was so unprecedented. Today's coronavirus numbers show 465 new cases have been confirmed in the past 24 hours. That comes as the state reports one new death from the virus. And a quick note about testing. On average, 25,000 tests per day are being administered, but that number has held steady for the past few weeks now. And with the coronavirus forcing the Democratic National Convention to be held virtually starting tonight, we expect things to be quite different, though we will see a familiar face. Governor Whitmer will be speaking tonight. And as Alice Barr shows us, all this is happening as the political battle over mail-in ballots and the Postal Service continues to boil. Alice? Devin, party unity is the theme of this nominating convention as Democrats try to fire up voters without the balloon drops and cheering crowds of conventions past. The Democratic National Convention kicks off tonight in a new world. Online speeches with party leaders from former First Lady Michelle Obama to Senator Bernie Sanders. We have got to do everything we can to come together to defeat Donald Trump. Delegates waving signs from their living rooms. I got this in the mail. I got this when Jill Biden speaks. And while the party seeks to rally its base without the pomp and circumstance of a traditional convention, demands are growing louder to protect an untraditional election as delays in the U.S. Postal Service threaten to derail mail-in voting. Speaker Nancy Pelosi calling the House back from recess for an emergency vote to fund and bar any changes to the USPS as she accuses President Trump of a campaign to sabotage the election. The newly appointed Postmaster General, a Trump ally and Republican donor, has been making cuts that are slowing down delivery, even for things like prescription drugs. 
Postal Service is a critical lifeline for our rural communities. While the Postal Service warns dozens of states it may not be able to deliver ballots in time, President Trump insists he's not trying to slow down the mail. I have encouraged everybody, speed up the mail, not slow the mail. And I also want to have a post office that runs without losing billions and billions of dollars a year. The president hitting the campaign trail himself this week, hoping to grab a piece of the spotlight as Democrats take center stage at their convention. Four new national polls show Joe Biden leading President Trump with support at or above 50 percent. But a new NBC News Wall Street Journal poll finds that fewer than half of those surveyed believe the election results will be accurately counted. In Washington, Alice Barr, Local 4. And Alice, NBC special coverage of the Democratic National Convention kicks off tonight at 10 here on Local 4. And then we hope you'll stick around for Local 4 News tonight at 11. All right, now to the weather and a much cooler Monday all across Metro Detroit. Yeah. Uh, I've seen uh, clouds off and on all day, but few spots getting a little bit of rain, Ben. Yeah, this is not what we saw Sunday. Those soakers uh, from the weekend are long gone, but there's a couple of them out there on Storm Tracker 4. Uh, a couple of those rolled through parts of uh, St. Lac and St. Clair County earlier today. Looks like there's still a few raindrops there west of Port Huron. There's another little batch that has popped up on the uh, Lake St. Clair shoreline uh, that's moving out toward the lake. So very few of us are actually seeing wet weather right now. Most of us are under dry conditions. Here's what we're watching for the rest of the week. Stray uh, showers coming to an end tonight. We'll talk timing on that. We will be warming up for the remainder of the week. Uh, we'll see if we're getting 90s back into play and the rain chances do return but not until the weekend. Have you seen that movie before? Seems like we just keep repeating the same forecast over and over, but we will look at Saturday and Sunday's chances and the humidity that's coming with it all in a few minutes, guys. And from Ben, we want to turn now to Bernie because it's a big day for football. First full contact practice of the year, albeit without fans, but Bernie, we continue to cling to optimism that uh, we're going to have pro football this year. We are continuing with that optimism. There's no question about that. Lines have been in Allen Park for the past couple of weeks. Today, though, it felt like training camp actually began padded practices with players slamming into each other. We've got highlights. Matthew Stafford still there, still running the show. This will lead right into the regular season, this padded practice. It's part of the new norm dictated by COVID. And remember, there is no preseason games, so this is the time of year to sharpen your team and get them in shape. The Lions will have 14 of these practices before opening the season against the Bears at Ford Field September 13th. Standing by live in Allen Park with one or more on the head banging of the day is Jamie Edmonds. Hi, Jamie. Hey there, Bernie. You know, it did feel kind of like a normal day at training camp here in Allen Park. And Matt Patricia just finished up his press conference on Zoom, kind of said the same thing. And people here are excited. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's the first day of pads, so everybody's um, excited. In this wild year, today was the first time teams could have full contact practice. The Lions say it's about time. Me personally, I'm excited. I'm ready to get this thing going. Um, been without football for a long time, so it was really good just to be back in the building. This should be a good year for us. The players say there is excitement about the upcoming year, which begins for the Lions in 27 days. But there is still some hesitation about the virus and staying safe. TJ Hawkinson tested positive and wound up on the COVID-19 list in July. He says it wasn't fun. Pretty lonely, um, really. There wasn't a whole lot going on. I mean, I, I uh, fortunately didn't have any symptoms. Um, wasn't really, it was kind of a surprise. Um, you know, to test positive for that and then um, kind of spend a week away from the from the teammates was, was tough. Same goes for Kenny Galladay, who says his symptoms were mild. Uh, just like fever and that's it lasted like two days, nothing major. Uh, I'm 100% and um, I'm just happy to be out there on the field right now and that's all that matters. Now that football is back, it's all about being COVID smart, which is a Danny Shelton term. Thank you guys, mask up. And you know, the Lions are taking this very seriously. Someone came up to where the media was sitting today outside and said, are you guys sitting far enough apart? Are you wearing your mask? And I thought, who is this person? Oh, it was Bob Quinn. I just couldn't tell because he had a mask to here and a hat to about here. They think they're being safe, Bernie, and they think they will have a season. Back to you. That's good news. Make sure they wear those masks. That's the only way you can get this thing done. Thanks, Jamie. 
Uh, Devin, Kimberly, more coming up on the lines in sports. We'll see you then. Fun to see. All right, Bernie. Well, the FDA authorizes a faster, cheaper way to test for the coronavirus. Ahead, you'll see why this test is being called a game changer by some and how the NBA has been critical in making it possible. And Detroit police release this wild doorbell camera video of shots being fired into a home. Paula. Lots of heavy lifting to pass legislation to really help schools get going. The question is whether or not schools can really be helped at this point.